The movie opens up with a young woman named Josie Geller, who works as a copy editor for the newspaper called the Chicago Sun-Times. Josie is really smart, but her job is kind of dull, and her life feels like a never-ending routine. Josie's big dream is to become a reporter and is always sending her boss, Gus, ideas for news stories. While Gus appreciates her enthusiasm, he doesn't think she's quite ready to be a reporter. He advises her to stick to her current job and focus, disappointing Josie. Because of her unhappiness, Josie tends to keep to herself and avoid socializing with her coworkers. Her coworker Anita is quite the opposite. She enjoys sharing stories about her romantic adventures. Josie, on the other hand, doesn't show much interest in these conversations. One day, the tough boss of the newspaper, Rigfort, gives Josie a challenging assignment. He wants her to go undercover at a high school and learn about the students' lives and secrets. She needs to enroll as a student and get close to the kids. Josie is really excited about this opportunity, even though Anita and Gus warn her it could cost her her job. Josie reassures them that she's up for the challenge and is eager to be a part of it. After work, Josie goes to meet her brother Rob and excitedly tells him about her new assignment. Rob used to be a high school baseball star, but now he too feels unsatisfied with his life. He's concerned about Josie going back to high school undercover. He reminds her of the tough time she had in high school, where she was an outcast and was teased with a hurtful nickname, Josie Grozy. Here we learn that this nickname and the difficult high school experience still haunt her, and she's never had a romantic relationship due to her lack of confidence. Despite her nervousness, Josie is determined to face this new challenge head-on and decides to enroll in the high school and complete the reporting. Before leaving, he requests Rob to exchange cars with her, and the latter reluctantly agrees. The movie then shifts to Josie's very first day at South Glen South High School where her attempt to make a stylish entrance turns into a bit of a fashion fiasco. She ends up looking quite amusing in her outfit. This unfortunate incident triggers a return to her old geeky persona that haunted her during her first high school experience. Late for class, she encounters her eccentric menopausal teacher, who punishes her by making her wear a sombrero. When asked to introduce herself to the class, Josie faces a challenge. In an attempt to fit in, she spins a bizarre tale, claiming to be from Bali and her family to be involved in sheep farming. It's a rather peculiar story, and it doesn't take long for the students to burst into laughter, largely due to her unusual outfit. Josie also has an unpleasant run-in with three mean and popular girls named Gibby, Kirsten, and Kristen. To add to the awkwardness, Guy Perkins, the most attractive and popular student at South Glen South, makes an appearance. This meeting with the school's heartthrob only deepens Josie's initial discomfort. Later, in her literature class, things start looking up. A young teacher named Sam Colston asks a question, and Josie not only answers it with ease, but also manages to impress him. Her academic success marks a positive turn in her undercover mission. After the school day ends, Josie discovers that Guy Perkins and his friends have played a prank on her by hiding her car. This leaves her frustrated, but her mood brightens when she meets Aldis, a kind-hearted, intelligent girl who befriends her. Aldis openly expresses her dislike for Guy Perkins and his gang, referring to them as lemmings. In return, Guy and his friends consider Aldis to be uncool and geeky. Aldis suggests that Josie should join a group known as the Denominators, consisting of the school's brightest students. The two then go for lunch together, where Josie tries to get a story for her newspaper assignment, but faces difficulties and is interrupted by a call from Gus. In the next scene, we learn that Josie's admiration is growing for her young English teacher, Sam Colson, who happens to be a Shakespeare enthusiast, just like her. She becomes the top student in his class, answering all of his questions with enthusiasm and frequently flashing a smile in his direction. However, when she's tasked with reciting a romantic excerpt from Shakespeare to Sam, painful memories resurface of a similar experience from her high school days. Back then, she read a romantic poem aloud in class to her crush, a popular boy named Billy Prince, which only led to embarrassment. To her surprise, her friend Sheila approaches her in the library and tells her that Billy Prince wants to take Josie to the senior prom, fulfilling her dream. Fast forward to the present, Josie is out driving at night with Aldis. 
they cross paths with Guy Perkins and his crew at a local hangout known as The Court, a place where inappropriate activities and underage drinking are prevalent. Guy's unpleasant behavior towards Josie contrasts with Aldis, who outwardly claims that nothing exciting happens at The Court. However, Josie, drawing from her own past experiences, realizes that Aldis secretly longs for a taste of popularity and adventure in her life, despite her claims to the contrary. The next day at work, Gus gets frustrated because another newspaper has revealed the truth about the court and the lives of teenagers. So he yells at Josie because she's failed to do it before their competitors, and urges her to become friends with the popular kids in school and learn more about them for the next exciting story. After work, Josie goes home and opens up to her brother Rob. She tearfully tells him that her current high school experience is just like her old one, filled with misery and all she wants is to be accepted without being mistreated. She also talks about her being scolded by her boss. Rob, who used to be really popular in school, encourages Josie. He believes that if she can make one cool person like her, nobody will dare to question her. He urges her to let go of her past and start fresh. The next day, when Josie arrives at school, she's surprised to find a colleague waiting for her. He sets up a hidden camera for her to wear, which will send back information to Gus. This leads to the whole office becoming obsessed with Josie's story. Meanwhile, Josie overhears Guy talking about a cool band playing at a bar that night. She quietly grabs a flyer about the event and plans to check it out. Later, the hidden camera records Josie's activities in the classroom. Anita, after hearing Josie's Shakespeare recital, starts to feel unhappy about her own promiscuous lifestyle. She becomes attracted to Gus, and although he initially tells her to leave him alone, he later agrees to meet her at night to talk about their lives. At night, Josie follows Guy and his friends to the bar. She enters there being a teenager, and to her surprise, she meets her English teacher Sam and his uptight girlfriend Lara. Josie greets Lara politely, but Lara acts rudely and asks Sam to leave the place, seemingly jealous of Josie. Our girl then approaches a group of boys who trick her into eating a hash brownie, making her act foolishly. She gets intoxicated and ends up dancing wildly on stage in front of Guy, the girls, and Sam. The next day, Josie oversleeps for school. Unbeknownst to her, the stamp on her hand from the club the night before imprints the word loser on her forehead. She happily goes to school, but she's horrified when everyone makes fun of her. Annoyed, she rushes to the bathroom, sees the mark on her face, and becomes sick. She breaks down in tears and recalls the night of her prom from her own high school life. Josie was excited at the thought of going with Billy Prince, but when he arrived in a limo with another girl, they threw eggs and insults at her, leaving her in tears. While Josie runs through the school halls feeling embarrassed, she unexpectedly meets her brother Rob, who has enrolled as a new student and is determined to help her become popular. Surprisingly, Rob becomes an instant hit with Guy Perkins and the other cool kids by spinning fantastic stories about Josie, convincing everyone that she's not a loser. This upsets her friend Aldis, but it makes Josie easier to hang out with the popular crowd to get to know them better. On another note, Josie and her English teacher Sam grow closer, but the latter struggles with his feelings because he believes she's just a student and therefore off limits. After Rob's intervention, Guy starts seeing Josie in a different light and even starts looking at her and smiling, which surprises her. Later in the class, when the students discuss the theme for the senior prom, Guy helps Josie suggest Meant for Each Other, a theme celebrating famous couples from around the world. The idea is a hit, making Josie even more popular with the cool group and among the students. Soon, the preparations for the prom night begin, and Josie goes shopping at the mall. There, she learns that college students often buy expensive clothes for prom and then return them the next day, claiming that they were never used. She shares this with Gus, her boss, who is surprised when he finds the whole office gathered to watch the live broadcast from Josie's hidden camera. Later that night, Rob throws a party for the high school students and invites everyone. Josie is shocked to find her house filled with students and her brother flirting with a 16-year-old female gymnast. Right then, Guy approaches Josie and, despite her stopping, enters her room. The latter somehow manages to hide her family photos and keep her relationship with Rob a secret. 
To her surprise, Guy asks her to be his prom date, and she happily agrees. The scene then fast-forwards to prom night, when Josie and Guy attend the prom as characters from Shakespeare's play, As You Like It. Guy picks her up in a limousine, and when they arrive at the prom, everyone is astonished by Josie's transformation. Meanwhile, Anita, Gus, and other co-workers watch through the camera and are thrilled when Josie is voted to be the prom queen. Together, they watch Josie dance with the prom king, Guy, and are happy about her win. Later, Josie is looking for a snack at the prom when Sam, her teacher, asks her to dance, and she agrees. Meanwhile, Guy surprises everyone by talking to Aldis and even dancing with her. While Josie is dancing with Sam and glancing at Aldis, she notices that three mean girls, Gibby, Kirsten, and Kristen, are planning to pour dog food on Aldis as payback for her insults. Before everything, Josie acts quickly and knocks the dog food can away from Aldis, spilling it on the three girls instead. In response, they turn on Josie and call her a loser. Hearing this, Josie is furious and throws her prom queen crown away. She then reveals her true age and occupation, expressing her disgust with the shallow behavior of the popular students. She admits to being an undercover reporter who tried to fit in with them to get their approval. Josie passionately tells them that who you were in high school doesn't matter in the real world, and urges them to be genuine rather than pretending to be someone else. Sam is hurt by her lies and walks out, saying he wants nothing to do with her. Outside, Josie tries to explain to Sam that she genuinely cares about him and didn't use him for her story, but the latter is not ready to listen and leaves, feeling betrayed. The next day at the office, Gus scolds Josie for ruining the climax of her prom night story. Determined to make amends, Josie decides to give Gus the story he wants and write her own high school story. In her article, she opens up about never having been kissed and shares kind words about the students of South Glen South including Guy's confidence, the beauty of Gibby, Kirsten, and Kristen, Aldous's intelligence, and her love for Sam. Her heartfelt story resonates with the entire city, revealing the pain she endured during her teenage years. Josie concludes her article by announcing that she will stand in the middle of the baseball field and wait for Sam to come and kiss her, if he truly loves her. The movie then quickly jumps ahead to a baseball tournament, Josie steps onto the field, and the crowd of spectators and reporters cheers for her. She sets a timer for five minutes and anxiously waits for Sam to arrive. However, Sam is unaware of the plan, as he's busy packing up to move to New York. Despite the time ticking away, Josie continues to wait, encouraged by Anita, Aldis, Gus, Guy, and the girls. Luckily, just as Josie's five-minute timer expires and she's about to return, Sam shows up, rushing onto the field. He apologizes for his tardiness and shares a passionate kiss with Josie. The movie concludes with this heartfelt moment, as the crowd cheers enthusiastically, celebrating Josie's first genuine kiss.